Hi everyone, welcome to Tammy's Creative Cards and Crafts. I'm Tammy and today I'm going to do a tutorial on my last video which was making um, a cute little uh, baby sensory toy. And um, so I mentioned that I would come on and do a tutorial for that. And so I am in front of my little baby here and um, I have it set up. So I'm going to attempt to do a quick tutorial on to show you how to make this adorable little sens sensory toy. So uh, to get started, I'll show you everything that you need. So you will need uh, four pieces of cotton. You can use flannelette. You can use whatever choice uh, material you would like. I'm using uh, cotton. I have two pieces of this uh, cream colored. It actually came in a little uh, charm pack here. So I'm using two pieces of that. And those are five inch squares. Okay, so that's what you have to cut these to. And then this cute little pattern is from a fat uh, quarter. And I've cut two five inch squares out of this. This adorable little print here with the little flower pattern. And you'll need two five inch squares out of that. So two, you'll need four uh, five inch squares all together of the cotton. You can use flannelette, like I said, um, something really cute. Then you also need um, a 10 inch piece of chenille. Now this is uh, a dimple chenille, which is also helps with the sensory uh, part of it because the baby feels all these little cute little bumps and this material is absolutely just so so soft uh, but this uh, the chenille has just little dimples in it you can see on the back there how it's all uh, raised up and on this side when they you uh, run your hand across it it has these little raised bumps, so, so cute. And I'm using like a, a light pink for this color. Okay, so you'll need a 10 inch piece of that one. You'll also need a 10 inch piece of plastic. Um, now you can order plastic um, from Amazon, but I'm sure that you have plastic around the house um, this is a piece of a plastic that I've washed that was a plastic bag that came on some cardstock. And I've washed it really good and then cut it to size. But you can also use, um, here is, this size, this type is good too. This is a, a cereal bag. And uh, you want like a thicker plastic, something that gives a nice crinkle noise because that's part of the sensory whole uh, part of it okay so like I said you can use a cereal bag uh, you know cracker bag something like that this was again just from cardstock something that's a little bit thicker not too thin okay so that's cut to 10 inch and then the last piece is a 10 inch piece of quilting batten and um, that's cut to 10 inch as well. Okay. So those are all your pieces. I'm using um, Guterman um, thread, which is what I always use. This is the uh, polyester thread. And um, also, I'm going to be using various kinds of ribbons. Now, to go with my, I have picked different types of ribbons to go with the colors 
that are in my um, pattern of my fat quarter. So I've picked out these pale pink ones. They have like a little satin edge on them. So I picked out a couple pieces like that. I picked out these little pink stripe ones. Two of those. I picked out this cute little turquoise uh, satin ribbon. And the reason I have these clipped down is so they have like a nice uh, folded edge on the end, which helps keep them straight when I'm sewing them down. I picked this cute little, um, it's kind of like Rick Rack. Um, but again, it's all about how the baby feels that and um, more like sensory. So this has like little bumps on it and texture to it. So that's really cute. There's two pieces there. This is another uh, turquoise, but it, as you can see, it has like ridges in it. More again about sensory. And um, here's another little yellow piece of Rick Rack that I thought I might put on there. Very similar to the yellow or the pink one, but this is a little yellow piece that I thought goes really cute with the pattern. Um, here's a little zigzag. Uh, pink one and pink and white one that I put on there and um, I have a little piece here that I'm going to put my little signature uh, paw print and and then also I'm going to make a pacifier holder and I'm going to show you how to do that right now um, so we can do that first so let's move the, these here so um, I have just this clipped right here, but I, you just pick a nice sturdy ribbon. Now I have it folded over here just to get that nice fold there. But this ribbon is approximately nine inches. And I have just folded. And first of all, I used my um, pinking shears to cut all my ribbon. That way it doesn't fray. So I have just uh, folded that over and then folded it over, I folded over about a half an inch and then folded it over again just to give it a nice, a nice uh, edge there. And I'm just gonna clip that with my little clips. These are fantastic. Um, for holding anything. I prefer to use these rather than pins because I'm always sticking myself with pins. So just hold on to that for a second. And then if you have these, these are this is fantastic. I also have a bigger um, press as well for putting in rivets, but this one is great for smaller snaps for babies. This is from Cam Snaps, and it, it's a tool for putting in little snaps, rivets. And I'm just going to show you how to do this. If you do not have this, you can just leave the little pacifier out. You can also just buy a little snap and sew it on. You don't have to have this, this tool. So I just have this here. And I'm just going to pick out um, a little, probably the hot pink color here. So you need the, the one with the little prong. Actually, you need two of those with the little prongs. And then there's a male and female end. You need one like that and one like that. So I'm just gonna close that up. I love that. Like I love all the different colors. And uh, these these are just awesome. Oh, my little container's coming off there. Sorry for moving the camera.
So what you do is you take your little prong and I have a little pokey tool here. And as you, as you have that folded, you're going to be folding it up this way so that your pacifier can go in here and your snap's going to be on the inside. So turn this around and you're going to poke your little prong through here. And if you need help uh, making a hole, that's what you have your little pokey tool for here. That just gives you a little help getting that started. And then you just kind of push that down with your nail. Make sure that's pushed all the way down like that. Okay. And then you take your female end here and you put that on there like that. And then you take your little tool and you line it up on your snap. And Make sure it's lined up right. And you just press that together. Very easy. And there you go. Now you have your little snap on there. And give that one more little push. Okay. So that's on there nice. Very good. And then I'm going to decide where I would like to have, how much I want to have that hang down. So I think about, maybe about there. So what I want to do now is take my other part the, with the prong and put it to the back, right about there. Make sure it's centered. And poke that through. This one is a little bit easier because it's only going through uh, one layer. Make sure that it's down all the way. And then put the male end on there. Okay. And then go back in with the little tool. Make sure that it's on the snap properly. And then give it another push again. And there we go. And there's our little snap on there. And as you can see, that snaps right on there. And there you go. Nicely fastened. And we're going to attach that onto our little tool there. And you'll be able to put your little pacifier on there and it won't get lost. Okay, so I'm just going to put that aside for now. That's how quick and easy uh, that is to do. I just love that little that little tool. And you can, um, I'll put the link for um, that in the description box below. But um, anything I've ordered from Cam Snaps is fantastic. I'm not getting any kickback or anything from the company by saying that, but they they're, they have excellent uh, quality items and um, I highly recommend that if you're gonna 
get into making stuff that you want to add snaps or rivets or anything like that, uh, check them out, even if you just get the small tool like this. Of course, I have the great big um, tool, uh, the rivet press, and that's because I use it for bags and and stuff like that. So, but uh, that I use it a lot more. So, let's get to uh, doing some sewing. So, what you're going to do first is take one of your cotton squares and one of your plain squares, and you're going to put right sides together. And you're going to sew this on one side at quarter of an inch seam allowance, just going down one side and make sure that they are uh, right sides together. Okay. And you're going to backspace at the beginning and at the end. Have something that looks like that and then you're going to do the same thing with the other one right sides together line them up quarter of an inch Okay, so now you have two pieces that look like this. And what I'm going to do is just flip these over, take your thumb and just finger press those open, that seam on the back, finger press it open. And now you're going to turn it so it's opposite from each other and you're going to put those right sides together just like that and the most important thing is you want to make sure that your seams are lined up so on this side you're going to have a right side together of a pattern and a plane and a pattern and a plane but the most important thing is to make sure that your seams line up in the middle okay so if you want to just put a, a clip on there to do that um, because what oh sorry uh, when you are sewing when it's all sewn uh, you'll notice that if that's not lined up so you can just Clip that together and then you're going to go back in and sew that a quarter of an inch all the way down, making sure that your seam is laying down flat as well. My seam was up there. Actually, what I'm going to do, I have my iron on here, so I'm just going to uh, flatten that out. So 
always good to have your iron ready to go. Okay, so as you can see, uh, I have it nice and flat now, and the uh, centers are lined up. I'm just going to clip that there. And I'm going to sew that a quarter of an inch all the way down. Okay, so now you have your 10 inch panel and you can see how nicely uh, that is lined up right in the center there. Um, and what I'm going to do now is just iron that nice and flat. Give me one second. It's a small little detail, but when you're done, it just makes it look so much uh, more professional. Okay, so sorry for this camera shaking. It's, uh, it's very shaky here that it's got a loose thread here. It's my little pet peeves, I hate loose threads. Okay, so now what you're gonna do to, to start putting this together so we can uh, get this all sewn Um, is we're going to now um, adhere the ribbons. So now this is totally up to you how you would like to have your ribbons on your front. Oh, I forgot to mention, I also have this um, teething ring. These are all natural. I ordered them online and um, I, I washed them as well in um, water and vinegar so um, they're nice and clean and um, they're specifically for baby teething rings so uh, if you are going to use those make sure that they are baby teething rings because um, just wood rings um, regular ones you can get um, they can splinter and stuff like that and of course you don't want to have anything like that with uh, infants so okay so I have these two little pink ribbons so I'm just going to start and uh, pin pin these so normally we have three going around each end so I'm just going to start and pin this here and you want to have about a quarter of an inch coming off the side. Try to put them on straight. So I try to do them opposite to each other. Um, but I do play around with this design. This I find takes the longest. It's, placing the ribbons where you want.
because you can end up uh, moving things around where you, if you change your mind, and I know I do that, so. Okay, so I have these, this cute turquoise. I'm gonna move this over on. And also, see, I almost did it myself. You want to make sure that the fold is laying down towards the inside of your fabric so that the cut part is the quarter of an inch um, facing out. Because when you turn this inside the other way, um, it will flip out. Okay, and I think I'm going to put my little wooden ring on this one. So I think I'm going to put that one right there in the middle. Okay. And now I have my uh, pacifier holder here, so I think I'll put that opposite uh, to the wooden ring. And I like them on the seam. So I'm gonna put that one up there. Okay. And I have another little pink stripe one here. Like I said, you uh, can align these any way you like. I like these cute little um, Rick rack pieces. Now to help with the bulk, I'm not going to put that on top of each other. I'm going to kind of put it beside. So, and then it just kind of gives it a little bit more surface area um, for the sensory. So I'm going to put that on this side. Babies just love these toys. Of course, the um, crinkle noise too is. I have a little turquoise thinner satin one here right on the seam. And one on this side. Like I said, um, it takes a little time just to set up all the ribbons. Here's another little yellow Little yellow rick rack one. I think I'll put this over here um, on this little colored part. Okay, and I think I'll just put one more ribbon over here. I have this cute little striped. And I'll put one right in here. So make this really cute. Straighten that. OK, 
Okay. So as you can see, I have 12 ribbons going all the way around. And so what I'm going to do now is go around and sew all the way around, um, down about a quarter of an inch and over each, each ribbon. And as I'm going over, I'm going to go back and forth um, two or three times just to secure those ribbons on um, my little piece of material here just to secure them, um, make sure that they stay on well. Oh, and I have my little signature paw to like to put right here. Okay, so do that. Okay, so you can start at any end, it doesn't matter. And you just start there and you go in about a quarter of an inch. Like I said, just uh, forward and backward a few times. Making sure just to double check that they're on there straight. Especially over the pacifier one, I end up doing that one several times. that they're on there nice and secure. could um, go around and keep continuously sewing but I choose to um, cut off each one I just find it a bit easier but it's totally your choice do move on you even though that you have them clipped so just double check off as you're going along that they're on there straight
somebody else who really loves these are uh, puppies uh, because they love the crinkle. Although this wouldn't last too long with puppy. straight there. Okay. Like I said, this is the longest part of the whole um, part of it, is putting these ribbons on. Um, I know I could probably fast forward through this part, but I, I really hate fast forwarding through videos because I just find that some people have made comments in the past that they don't like when videos are fast forward in case they're beginners and um, I know myself when I was start, first starting to sew that was one of the things as well like I was learning how to sew and it's very frustrating when you're starting out if the video goes fast to kind of follow along and I know that I'm just sewing on um, ribbons but it could be different things of making cards. It could be um, any little steps. And so I always tend to not do uh, fast forwards in my videos. Um, you can fast forward it on your vid on when you're watching it and uh, skip ahead if you like. If you, you know, don't want to sit there and watch me so uh, ribbons on but um, some people um, just cutting these little threads off here some people enjoy watching the whole thing and don't mind the extra minute or two okay so now we have all our uh, ribbons sewn on they're nice and secure on there now and we have our little pacifier holder and our teething ring. Everything is on there nice and secure. So the next step, more little threads. The next step is to uh, layer it all up and put it together. So um, what I'm going to do next is you would you take your uh, pattern your piece that you just sewn all your ribbons and everything on lay that down Next you're going to take your beautiful piece of chenille and You're going to put right sides together on top of that Okay, and you want to make sure that it's lined up perfectly all the way around and this does stretch, so, you know, make sure it is all lined up. OK. 
okay? That you're going to get everything there. Okay, then on top of that, you're going to take your piece of plastic. Now, this is going to be your most frustrating part of the whole thing because that piece of plastic is going to move and annoy you. Um, and then you're going to take your piece of quilting cotton and you're going to uh, cover that, trying to keep everything aligned. Then very carefully go around and start pinning everything to make sure that you've caught all your edges and take your time when you're doing this because what will happen is that piece of material is going to move on you and um, and then stuff's not going to line up so I like to pin one corner and then go to the opposite corner and then pin that making sure I have all the pieces. Go back to the opposite corner, pin that, make sure I have all four layers. Picking up that, pinning that, then going to the other corner, picking up all four layers. that then you can go back and pin the middle pin the middle all the way around catching everything uh, yesterday when I did this I had to go back and sew a couple of different parts um, after I turned it inside out I had to go back and sew it a couple times because um, it moved on me and didn't catch. So just take your time and uh, get all these layers. Now see, I can see right away that this little piece of chenille is a little bit bigger uh, than my bottom piece so just to make things easier I'm going to cut that off that I'm going to be able to grab all the layers. See, I have the quilting cotton, the plastic, the quilting cotton, the plastic, the chenille, and the piece there. I'm just going to straighten that out there. Pin that, and then try to go around make sure that you have everything. This may take a second to do, but trust me, in the end result will save you time. Because if you're double checking that you're grabbing everything, you're you're going to make sure that you you do catch everything in the end. For anybody, like I said, if you don't have these clips, I highly recommend them. They're called Wonder Clips, and um, they're fantastic. They really grab on. Okay, the other thing I will mention, 
and I know I have everything um, clipped all the way around, what you want to do is you want to leave one area, sorry, I'm not in camera here, one area unclipped, okay? So I'm going to take this one off right here, and from here to here, I'm not going to sew, okay? So I'm going to start sewing right from here from this point. And we're going to sew all the way around the whole perimeter um, about a half inch seam allowance going all the way around. And um, being very careful as you're going around that you're watching that everything is being caught. Um, in your um, when you're sewing okay so just be careful take your time and um, look I'm just going to show you how this is done here hopefully I'll get all this done in one and you're going to to uh, back stitch in the beginning and at the end and take your time because you are sewing through four layers. My machine doesn't have any problem uh, going through this. I mean, it's not it's not very thick. I apologize for my camera moving there. It's just the vibration of when you get to the corner, pick your presser foot up, turn your material and drop it the vibration from the sewing machine um, so it ends up moving it sometimes I have to figure out a better figure out some other way to hold my uh, camera and sew at the same time because I see that it's moving. Uh, essentially I'm trying to sew and hold the camera still at the same time without it wiggling. Okay, so I left this little opening here and I'm just going to go around and kind of check, make sure that I've caught everything. It's hard to tell. Actually, I feel that the chenille is very close here, so I'm going to go back uh, over here and just go down over this side here.
Okay, and just want to check all the way around. If you can see your seams, see the chenille and see the white, you should be pretty good. And then what I want to do is just trim my corners off. Careful not to cut into your stitching. And that'll just make your corners um, come out a little bit better. Just to take off that excess bulk there. getting to the end. I know this video is getting long, but now it's my favorite part. So now we can uh, put our hand in here and you're going to go in between the chenille and the white and you're just going to reach in and go to the farthest corner. Now you're going to see all that's all revealed here if everything has caught and start turning it out the other way. And if you've missed a part, it's not a big deal. I will sh I can show you how to fit. You just turn it right back in the other way and just sew down the side. Like I explained, it happened to me yesterday. It's not a big deal. It's easy to fix. There's my little paw print there. What you want to do is go hear that little crinkle sound. Isn't that adorable? And uh, go and pop out your little corners. And sorry for the noise there. That's the so go and straighten out your side there. Get your finger um, Right in there to pop out that corner. There we go. And uh, you can just kind of wiggle it too, and it gets the corner out. And then go to the opposite one here. This. little fuzzies off. Okay. This is so adorable. Okay. So now you're just left with this little seam right here. Which what I'm going to do is just lay this flat and I have my iron here. Actually, I see this one little spot. See that right there? That it didn't catch right by that ring. So I'm going to flip that in. Like I said, it can happen. So what I'm going to do is flip that out really quick. Right by that ring. I'm just going to flip that out and go down that one little side right there. All I'm doing is turning it back. Get all these fuzzies off here. Okay, I'm going to 
Okay, so I'm just going to go over this little spot right here uh, just to catch that again and make sure just before I do that, I'm going to put my finger down in there and make sure that that chenille is up right against the edge. Bear with me, I'm just gonna do this right here. I caught it that time and so I'm just going to fix the corners again poke the corners out and what I'll do now is get my iron going I'm just going to go over the top of it just to make it nice and pretty go to seal that What I'll do here is you're going to tuck in your your closure there to make it get a little loose thread. Bring up your lining and your plastic. Make sure your little fuzz fuzzy stuff's coming up all around there. to do is just give this a little sew um, right here and I'm going to sew this seam down all the way around the whole perimeter just gives it a nice uh, little finished look Thank you. 
then what I'm also going to do is the seam going down the middle and going across, I'm going to sew on top of that as well uh, because what that's going to do is when you put it in the wash, uh, that is going to keep your plastic in place uh, from bunching up or anything else inside. bunching up. As you can see, this took like no time to sew all the way around. Sorry for the shaky camera there. Okay, so what I've done is I've stopped right on that seam. I'm going to sew right down the middle. and then go right down the other one. Okay, so now here is my crinkle toy with the dimple back, isn't that adorable? With the cute little front on it, got some And you have all your, your pacifier holder and all your ribbons uh, going all the way around. And how cute is that? I know that the video went long, um, but now you know how to make one of these. And um, I assure you, it goes a lot faster once um, you start making more than one. You can probably make one in about a half half an hour um, and a lot quicker if you have everything um, cut out and ready to go. So I hope you enjoyed the little tutorial. I hope it wasn't too long and uh, I really appreciate you joining me today. Thank you so much for um, watching my channel. Please subscribe if you're not a subscriber. Uh, hit the bell and you'll be notified of my next video. And um, as I mentioned, I plan on doing um, some videos very soon, making the um, little gift bags and uh, definitely some more um, baby items coming up. As you can see, my iron was wet there, so I got uh, part of this got wet, but that's okay. Kind of uh, sanitized it as well with the um, steam from the iron. So you have a great day and thank you so much for joining me. God bless to each and every one of you. Um, let me know in the comments if you love the item.
Okay, bye-bye.